Hi, my name is Mary Kay with Nesky, and right now we are on the corner of Tustin Street and Maltair Street in Pittsburgh in what's known as the Uptown Soho area. I've always been interested in the Pittsburgh area and the new developments that we're having, so when I found some property here that was for sale, I was eager to buy it. And this is one piece of the property that I'm standing on right now that's approximately 100 square feet, but it has a lot of potential. A few of the ideas I had um, with purchasing this property was to set up some bike lockers. I think that that would be really convenient for people to get on the bike trail. Also, I thought of really having some beautiful green space to make it more desirable to visit uh, Uptown Pittsburgh. Hi, we're now on the corner of Seneca and Tustin and behind me you can see the 0.25 acre lot that I also purchased. One of the attractive features of this property is the beautiful iron statue weighing three tons and is 13 feet high. I would love to have a design that incorporates our Roman soldier at Soho. Hi, I'm Gary Desjardins. I am general manager of PPG Paints Arena right, uh, right behind me. I'm currently standing at the southeast corner of the arena, uh, right along Fifth Avenue. Duquesne University campus is just to the north or south of us, I should say. Downtown is right here to the west. And right where I'm standing is a little bit of a space that we have uh, that's available for activation. We just haven't been able to figure out a consistent way to do it for our events. We're the home for the Penguins, um, a lot of concerts, a lot of family shows, uh, and we've used this space for pre-event activity during playoff games, but not pretty much for anything else. So we've had some temporary food uh, and interactive activities before Penguin games, uh, but not very much else. So this is one of the spaces that we see an opportunity, we just haven't figured it out yet. Well, um, so in this space here, this is um, kind of standalone shell space. It's unfinished. It's been unfinished since the arena opened in August of 2010. Um, it's designed so that it can operate as one big space or we can subdivide it and have two separate spaces. Challenge with this is that we do not have direct access into the arena. So the storefront is facing Fifth Avenue. Uh, all the entries and exits are from that, uh, from that area. We do have uh, stubbed out in this space everything for sewer, for gas, multiple gas locations, multiple sewer locations, chilled water and hot water for HVAC controls. Uh, we have domestic hot and cold water in here for restrooms and anything along those lines that we need. Uh, so it could be a variety of spaces. It could be office space, it could be retail, it could be a quick service restaurant. Um, but again, something that we're looking for as a destination that can operate independently on a regular basis outside of the events, um, but also can augment the event at the same time. So we're looking for something a little bit creative in, uh, in here. My name is Casey Steiner. 
and I'm president of Steiner Realty, which is a local real estate company where we've done development and uh, apartment management for the past 30 something years. Uh, we are in the lobby of the, the AME Zion Church at 2037 Forbes Avenue down the street from Duquesne in Uptown. And uh, we're here to talk about this space uh, for your project. Uh, the church was built in the late 1800s, originally as a Presbyterian church, and over the course of time changed denominations, and we purchased it uh, six, seven years ago uh, to, from the prior church use, the Baptist AME Zion Church, that had gone out of business or closed down. Uh, we purchased this property and the adjacent house that was part of the church's uh, manor house uh, six or seven years ago with the thought of improving it to add an amenity to the area and to for our tenants at the Fifth Avenue School Lofts. Uh, we have uh, been watching the area and there's been some development. Uh, the building behind the Fifth Avenue Lofts was developed into uh, the Mackey School Lofts and there's been a newer uh, flats on Fifth, uh, new construction building further down Fifth Avenue. But we're still kind of waiting to see what happens in this part of Uptown uh, and would welcome your participation in ideas for reuse of this space. Uh, it, it's a, so we'll tour the building now and uh, try to give you a good uh, video tour of the building. Thank you. We're back now in the main area of the church. Uh, where we have the original pews and the altar set up and the organ over in the corner. Uh, this area is approximately 30 feet wide and 40 feet from the entry to the end of the altar. There are interesting rooms off to the side that are additional space that have these current garage doors that can go up and down to make individual rooms uh, or to open up for additional seating for whatever might be occurring in this main room. And up above me is a choir loft with two rooms and a railing for the choir, obviously, but also uh, potential other use. And then in the vestibule outside of this main room is a, a large room and an entry area that uh, should be part of the film. Uh, our uh, thought, uh, we've had many thoughts on the reuse of this building, but one had originally been as a restaurant to provide an amenity to the local area. And although I still think that's a great potential reuse, the issue is whether the area has uh, had enough people moving in to uh, merit a restaurant and provide customers for it. Uh, other options, uh, one might think residential, but we have found with churches, uh, a residential reuse is difficult because of the lack of natural windows and due to the large uh, length of the windows make it difficult to separate it into floors because you'd have to penetrate or, or cut through a window. Uh, certainly a, a office, tech office, concept is a possibility, and many other things. I, I think our next spot on the tour, eventually we'll be getting down to a lower level here, which uh, originally had been a kitchen area and a baptism area for the church. Uh, so that has additional possibilities. Welcome to the basement of the church at 2037 Forbes Avenue. Here we had started uh, initial demolition, removing the ceilings and the walls, 
in anticipation of development and haven't moved much further. So currently it's a little musty down here. Uh, the space is pretty much the same footprint as the space upstairs. I'd estimate 2,000, 2,500 feet, something like that. Uh, there is over here uh, what had been used as the kitchen for the church, uh, which we have ripped out, but obviously had the, all the kitchen plumbing layout. And over here we have an in-ground, indoor swimming pool. Oh, I mean a baptismal font for the church. And behind that were, were two bathrooms, again, that have been demolished, but the uh, man, uh, ladies and gents bathroom, and then a furnace room uh, available. And then there's access through uh, a storm cellar door to the outside yard. Uh, the ceiling height here is uh, probably seven and a half feet. And then there's a main beam coming through that's around seven feet. So it's not uh, the uh, big open space that was up above. And one thing to note about the church space up above is the ceiling height there is probably 20, 25 feet. It's uh, very high in the main uh, area there. So now we'll proceed to other parts of the church. Here we are in the house that's adjacent to the church. The address is 2035 Forbes Avenue. It was built in the late 1880s, has a lot of the old charm, but is in obviously poor condition that you'll see as we walk through. It is connected to the church through a breezeway passageway that is around 10 feet wide that connects the two properties uh, and allows access between the two. Uh, what has happened in the, uh, sometime in the past, they've also added a staircase in that breezeway for access to the second floor of this property. So as we walk through the first floor, it is currently just a, a single uh, unit and the options would be to restore this house to a single family house and put up a set of stairs going upstairs uh, to the second floor and then third floor. But we refrain from doing that uh, because of the option of keeping this space available for the church reuse space, perhaps as a restaurant room and kitchen in the back, uh, all sorts of uh, potential concepts. The house has a lot of the original trim, uh, fireplace behind all that wood there. And in the dining room, uh, this wall is just a, uh, a temporary fake wall. So this can be taken out very easily. And watch your step here. There's a pretty attractive bay window set up here and a nice old slate fireplace there. So here we are in the dining room that uh, again has a nice feel to it, but needs uh, complete renovation. Beyond the dining room is a kitchen area that's moderate size, not terribly big, and currently is just down to the studs, so there's nothing really to see there. But I, I think we'll probably get a picture of it. And uh, upstairs is laid out with a, a front large master bedroom uh, a bath area, and then two bedrooms uh, on the back side of the house. And then there's an interesting set of stairs that goes up to the third floor, where there are also two nice size bedrooms. Uh, and obviously, not obviously, but uh, a chance to add a third bath or a second bath up on the third floor. Um, the other feature of the house is there is a nice backyard that runs to the, uh, from the back of the house to the alleyway for uh, grass or you know, lawn and, and patio seating. Uh, the basement is just a, a rough basement that could just be used for mechanicals. 
So without further ado, I'll say goodbye and uh, wish you best of luck. Thanks. This space is uh, what was a Subway restaurant. It was here when the building opened in, uh, in 2010. Uh, recently closed uh, earlier this year and it's been, va been vacant for about five or six months. Um, pretty much it's what you see. Uh, has pretty, still has everything in it. It still has the freezer, has the cooler, has bread making, um, the bread warmers, microwave, has the cash registers, pretty much everything needed to operate a QSR is in here, but particularly if it's a subway. Um, so we had a couple of nibbles on this one, um, a couple on, on the line, and then there, for timing reasons, things changed. Uh, so it's still on the market um, for restaurant or could be used, on, again, for almost anything else. It could be uh, office space. Uh, same situation we have here that we have in the shell space next door is that there's not a direct access into the arena, so it is a standalone uh, space, very similar to Friday's, which is just on the other side of the wall here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Good morning and welcome. Uh, this is uh, Murat Kainar and welcome to the Duquesne University's uh, Business School Freshman Innovation uh, Program. Myself and my wife, uh, we are the property owners of this open uh, lot as you see in the background. Uh, it is located at uh, 1905 through 1911 Forbes Avenue. It's approximately 10,000 square feet in uh, area with a small uh, sloping and it's between the Forbes Avenue and the Watson Street in the back as you may see and uh, the property used to own uh, a house uh, row houses uh, back in early 1900s and since then with the decrease in the economy in the city they have been abandoned and they have been demolished uh, myself and my wife, we purchased this uh, property two years ago with the idea of uh, investing into the community through innovative uh, ways as well. And uh, I think this will be a good collaboration between us and you all at Duquesne Business School.